chapter 9 traders kings and pilgrims jagini at the market jagini looked forward to the fair in the village she loved to see and touch the pots and pans of shiny steel bright plastic buckets cloth printed with brilliant floral designs and clockwork toys all of which came from the city the men who spread out their wares came in buses and trucks and went back at the end of the day why were they always on the move she wondered her mother explained that they were traders people who bought things were they were made and sold them elsewhere how to find out about trade and traders you read about the northern black polished ware in chapter 8 this fine pottery especially bowls and plates were found from several archaeological sites throughout the subcontinent how do you think it reached these places traders may have carried them from the places where they were made to sell them at other places south india was famous for gold spices especially pepper and precious stones pepper was particularly valued in the roman empire so much so that it was known as black gold so traders carried many of these golds to rome in ships across the sea and by land in caravans there must have been quite a lot of trade as many roman gold coins have been found in south india can you think of how and why these reached traders explored several sea routes some of these followed the coasts there were others across the arabian sea and the bay of bengal where sailors took advantage of the monsoon winds to cross the seas more quickly so if they wanted to reach the western coast of the subcontinent from east africa or arabia they chose to sail with the southwest monsoon and sturdy ships had to be built for these long journeys new kingdoms along the coasts the southern half of the subcontinent is marked by a long coastline and with hills plateaus and river valleys amongst the river valleys that of the kaveri is the most fertile chiefs and kings who controlled the river valleys and the coasts became rich and powerful sangam poems mention the mubender this is a tamil word meaning the three chips used for the heads of three ruling families the cholas cheras and pandyas see map 7 page 105 who became powerful in south india around 2300 years ago each of the three chiefs had two centers of power one inland and one on the coast of these six cities two were very important puhar or kaveri pattinam the port of the cholas and madurai the capital of the pandyas the chiefs did not collect regular taxes instead they demanded and received gifts from the people they also went on military expeditions and collected tribute from the neighboring areas they kept some of the wealth and distributed the rest amongst their supporters including members of their family soldiers and poets many poets whose compositions are found in the sangam collection composed poems in praise of chiefs who often rewarded them with precious stones gold horses elephants chariots and fine cloth around 200 years later a dynasty known as the satavnas became powerful in western india see map 7 page 105 the most important ruler of the satavnas was gautamiputra shri satakarni we know about him from an inscription composed on behalf of his mother gautami balashri he and other satavna rulers were known as lords of the 
Dakshina Patha, literally the route leading to the south, which was also used as a name for the entire southern region. He sent his army to the eastern, western and southern coast. Why do you think he wanted to control the coasts? The story of the silk route. The rich glossy colors of silk as well as its smooth texture make it a highly valued fabric in most societies. Making silk is a complicated process. Raw silk has to be extracted from the cocoons of silk worms, spun into thread and then woven into cloth. Techniques of making silk were first invented in China around 7000 years ago. While the methods remain a closely guarded secret for thousands of years, some people from China who went to distant lands on foot, horseback and on camels carried silk with them. The paths they followed came to be known as the Silk Road. Sometimes Chinese rulers sent gifts of silk to rulers in Iran and West Asia and from there the knowledge of silk spread further west. About 2000 years ago, wearing silk became the fashion amongst rulers and rich people in Rome. It was very expensive as it had to be brought all the way from China. Along dangerous roads through mountains and deserts, people living among, uh, uh, along the route often demanded payments for allowing traders to pass through. Look at map 6, page 76 to 77, which shows the Silk Road and its branches. Some kings tried to control large portions of the route. This was because they could benefit from taxes, tributes and gifts that were bought by traders travelling along the route. In return, they often protected the traders who passed through their kingdoms from attacks by robbers. The best known of the rulers who controlled the Silk Road were the Kushanas, who ruled over Central Asia and Northwest India. Around 2000 years ago, their two major centers of power were Peshawar and Mathura. Takshila was also included in their kingdom. During their rule, a branch of the Silk Route extended from Central Asia down to the seaports of, at the mouth of the river Indus, from where silk was shipped westwards to the Roman Empire. The Kushanas were amongst the earliest rulers of the subcontinent to issue gold coins. These were used by traders along the Silk Road. Why do you think it would have been difficult to use carts along the Silk Road? Silk was also sent from China by sea. Trace the roots of Map 6, page 76-77. What do you think? would have been the advantages and problems in transporting silk by sea. The spread of Buddhism. The most famous Kushana ruler was Kanishka, who ruled around 1900 years ago. He organized a Buddhist council where scholars met and discussed important matters. Ashwagosha, a poet who composed a biography of the Buddha, the Buddha Charitra, lived in his court. Ashwagosha and other Buddhist scholars now began writing in Sanskrit. A new form of Buddhism known as Mahayana Buddhism now developed. This had two distinct features. Earlier, the Buddha's presence was shown in sculpture by using certain signs. For instance, his attainment of enlightenment was shown by sculptures of the people tree. Now, status of the Buddha were made. Statues. Many of these were made in Mathura, while others were made in Takshila. The second change was belief in Buddhist tattvas. 
and these were supposed to be persons who had attained enlightenment once they attained enlightenment they could live in complete isolation and meditate in peace however instead of doing that they remained in the world to teach and help other people the worship of buddhist satvas became very popular and spread throughout central asia china and later to korea and japan buddhism also spread to western and southern india where dozens of caves were hollowed out of hills for monks to live in some of these caves were made on the orders of kings and queens others by merchants and farmers these were often located near passes through the western ghats roads connecting prosperous ports on the coast with cities in the deccan ran through these passes traders probably halted in these caves mon- monasteries during their travels buddhism also spread south eastwards to sri lanka myanmar thailand and other parts of southeast asia including indonesia the older form of buddhism known as theravada buddhism was more popular in these areas read page 100 once more can you think of how buddhism spread to these lands <clears throat> the quest of the pilgrims as traders journeyed to distant lands in caravans and ships pilgrims often traveled with them pilgrims are men and women who undertake journeys to holy places in order to offer worship the best known of these are the chinese buddhist pilgrims fa xian who came to the subcontinent about 1600 years ago zuan zhang who came around 1400 years ago and ai qing who came about 50 years after zuan zhang they came to visit places associated with the life of the buddha chapter 6 as well as famous monasteries each of these pilgrims left an account of his journey they wrote of the dangers they encountered on their travels which often took years of the countries and the monasteries that they visited and the books they carried back with them suhan sang who took the land route back to china through the northwest and central asia carried back with him statues of the buddha made of gold silver and sandalwood and over 600 manuscripts loaded on the backs of 20 horses over 50 manuscripts were lost when the boat on which he was crossing the indus capsized he spent the rest of his life translating the remaining manuscripts from sanskrit into chinese the beginning of bhakti this was also the time when the worship of certain deities which became a central feature of later hinduism gained in importance these deities included shiva vishnu and goddess such as durga these deities were worshiped through bhakti an idea that became very popular at this time bhakti is generally understood as a person's devotion to his or her chosen deity anybody whether rich or poor belonging to the so called high or low caste man or woman could follow the path of bhakti the idea of bhakti is present in the bhagavad gita a sacred book of the hindus which is included in the mahabharata see chapter 11 in this krishna the god asks arjun his devotee and friend to abandon all dharmas and take refuge in him as only he can set arjuna free from every evil this form of worship gradually spread to different parts of the country those who followed the system of bhakti emphasized devotion and individual worship of a god or goddess 
rather than the performance of elaborate sacrifices. According to this system of belief, if a devotee worships the chosen deity with a pure heart, the deity will appear in the form in which he or she may desire. So the deity could be thought of as human being, lion, tree or any other form. Once this idea gained acceptance, artists made beautiful images of the deities. Because the deities were special, these images of the deity were often placed within special homes, places that were described as temples. You will learn more about the temples in chapter 11. Bhakti inspired some of the best expressions in art, sculpture, poetry and architecture. Hindu the word Hindu, like the term India, is derived from the river Indus. It was used by Arabs and Iranians to refer to people who lived to the east of the river and to their cultural practices including religious beliefs.